Do you love books? How about books that are mysterious? Many of these books contain treasures that cannot be found elsewhere. Take, for example, this old book that will make you question everything you've been told about the origins of humans who wrote the book and what exactly it says about where humans come from. Join us as we examine this 2,000-year-old Bible book chapter filled with terrifying knowledge of the human race alongside other mysterious books. Number 6. Voynich Manuscript First, let us begin with this super mysterious book that has stumped even the greatest minds for centuries. It's called the Voynich Manuscript, a name that instantly ignites the imagination. Picture this, a 600-year-old book quietly residing at Yale University, almost whispering the secrets it has held onto for centuries. The first time we see this book enter the record books is way back in 1666. That's when an Italian Jesuit's library acquired it from a bookseller in Prague who found this book but couldn't understand a word of it. He thought maybe they could figure it out. Turns out they couldn't. And it wasn't just them. From then till now, nobody's been able to decode this book. Not even Alan Turing, one of the greatest minds of the 20th century. The Voynich Manuscript isn't some giant tome with a goatskin cover. It holds 246 pages of pure mystery. It seems 14 pages went missing at some point. Maybe they were lost to time, or maybe someone got a little too curious. Who knows? The book is believed to have been written between 1404 and 1438, though some people think it could be a copy of something even older. The illustrations inside range from your everyday stuff to the outright bizarre. Scholars decided to divide this book into sections based on these pictures. You've got a bit of everything. Herbs, stars, medicine, the cosmos, living things. There's even a section that looks like recipes, but without being able to read the thing, we can only guess what these recipes are for. Now, here's where things get really wild. Some people think the manuscript is written in a cipher, like some secret code. Others are convinced it's an entirely unknown language. Not too long ago, a group of Canadian computer scientists were sure they'd cracked it using artificial intelligence. They managed to translate the book into modern Hebrew. Pretty impressive, right? Well, not so fast. They'd forgotten one tiny detail. If the manuscript was as old as we think it is, it would have used medieval Hebrew, not the modern stuff. Plus, there seem to be traces of other languages hidden within the text, too. So, the mystery of the Voynich manuscript continues. The secrets it holds are still waiting to be uncovered. Who knows what we'll discover when we finally crack the code. Number 5. Book of Soiga Now we have a tale about a spellbinding book of magic from the 16th century that had a knack for getting lost. We're about to dive into the world of John Dee, one of the most famous occultists of the Elizabethan era, and his roller coaster journey with a book known as the Book of Soiga. Back in 1551, Dee, a renowned scholar and magician, came across this bizarre 200 page book filled with incantations, magical rituals, and other uncanny procedures. Most of it was in Latin, which Dee could read, but sprinkled throughout the book were these gnarly patterns formed by about 40,000 letters across 36 tables. What did these patterns mean? No one knew, not even the brilliant Dee. So, Dee teamed up with Edward Kelly, a man famous for being a scryer, someone who could communicate with the supernatural. Dee was hoping Kelly could contact the Archangel Uriel to get some intel on this enigmatic book. Kelly, although a controversial figure, put on a show and supposedly contacted Uriel. Uriel apparently said that this book was a gift to Adam in paradise by God's good angels. Now, that sounds legit, right? But Uriel added a twist. Only the Archangel Michael could help Dee unlock the book's secrets, but as fate would have it, the book went missing, just up and disappeared. Dee managed to stumble upon it again after a few years, but after he died, the book vanished as if it never existed, except for some breadcrumbs Dee left behind in his diaries. Fast forward to 1994, centuries later, when the book decided to resurface. It was found in the most unexpected of places, the archives of the British Library. How did it end up there? That's still a big question mark, just like the content of the book. We know it's a mix of late medieval or early modern stuff, blending alchemy with Christian references. But as for those mysterious tables, it's anyone's guess. Number 4. Dresden Codex Now, we're journeying back in time to ancient civilizations like the Mayans, 
who were deciphering the secrets of the universe in ways we're only beginning to comprehend today. Our time machine destination, the creation of the Dresden Codex, an ancient Mayan text that's roughly 800 years old and is as fascinating as it gets. Imagine holding a book that contains 78 pages chock full of Mayan hieroglyphs filled with knowledge about topics we still grapple with today. We're talking about astronomy, astrology, religion, the changing of seasons, medicinal knowledge, and various rituals. It's an encyclopedia of life as the Maya knew it, and honestly, they knew a lot. In the pages of the Dresden Codex, there are tables filled with mind-blowing mathematical and astronomical calculations, like predictions for eclipses, tracking the movement of planets, the phases of the moon, and the cycles of Venus. It's amazing how incredibly precise these calculations are, a testament to the advanced knowledge the Maya had in astronomy and mathematics, skills that even in the modern era, we can't help but admire. But that's not all the Codex offers. It delves into the mystical as well, presenting sections dedicated to divination, almanacs, ceremonies, and even narrates a mythological story of a massive flood. The intriguing correlation between the Mayan calendar and the cycles of time and creation are also outlined, giving us insights into the way the Maya perceived the world and the cosmos. This isn't a typical book either. It's a work of art, crafted on a type of paper made from the inner bark of a wild fig tree, painted with vegetable dyes. The pages are folded like an accordion, making it even more visually appealing. The pages have red borders, and vertical lines separate the sections and columns. It's the kind of book that turns the act of reading into an experience. All in all, the Dresden Codex is a treasure trove of information about the ancient Maya civilization and culture. It's not just a record of facts and figures. It's a masterpiece that showcases the immense skill and creativity of the Maya scribes. Each page, symbol, and illustration whispers tales of a civilization that, though long gone, continues to captivate us with its mysteries. And here's where things get really interesting. The Codex just popped up out of nowhere in the 1730s, in Dresden, Germany of all places. How did it get from ancient Mayan lands to Germany? No one knows. It's a mystery shrouded in the mists of time. Some say it was carried by the winds of chance, others say destiny had a role to play. What we do know is that many Mayan texts met a tragic fate at the hands of some rather over-enthusiastic Christian missionaries. These guys were on a mission to erase anything that didn't fit their belief system, and they left a path of destruction in their wake. Number 3. Gospel of the Lots of Mary Think you've heard all there is to know about the Gospels? Well, buckle up because we have one that'll make your hair stand on end, the Gospel of the Lots of Mary. Doesn't ring a bell, does it? To start with, it's written in Coptic, an old Egyptian language. A gospel in Egyptian, not exactly what you'd expect, huh? It's around 2,500 years old and claims to have been written by Mary. Yes, that Mary, the mother of Jesus. But don't expect to find any insider information about Mary's life or Jesus' teachings here. It's not that kind of book. Instead, it's filled with 37 cryptic answers to life's many questions. Each of these responses is numbered from 1 to 37, like a mysterious ancient self-help manual. The wording of these answers is what makes this gospel so intriguing. They're vague and can be applied to all sorts of situations. It's kind of like reading a fortune cookie, where the message can be molded to fit your life. But remember, this isn't a party trick. These are words of wisdom coming from an age-old text, offering guidance to those in need. You open the book, and the first thing you read is, The Gospel of the Lots of Mary, the Mother of the Lord Jesus Christ. She, to whom Gabriel the Archangel brought the good news, he who will go forward with his whole heart will obtain what he seeks. Only do not be of two minds. Pretty intriguing, right? Now this fascinating piece of history is currently residing at Harvard University. Anne-Marie Lugendic, a professor in the religion department at Princeton University, got her hands on it and decided to decipher this interesting book. She cracked it open in 2014, and what she found was nothing short of mind-blowing. In her book, Forbidden Oracles, The Gospel of the Lots of Mary, she explained that this mysterious gospel was actually used for divination. That's right, people use this book to try and predict the future. How did this process work, you ask? Nobody knows. It's one of the secrets lost in the sands of time. Even more interestingly, 
it's thought that this text might have been particularly popular among women. After all, it invokes the name of Mary, a strong female figure in Christianity. But don't get it twisted. This gospel isn't exclusive to women's concerns. It offers its wisdom to all who seek it. Number two, the Red Book. Okay, have you ever heard about this mysterious book, The Red Book by Carl Jung? This is not just any old book. It is a manuscript bound in red leather, filled with the raw, intimate musings of one of the greatest minds in psychology. Jung worked on this masterpiece from 1914 to around 1930. It wasn't like he woke up one day and decided to write a book. It was the culmination of intense psychological experiments he conducted between 1913 and 1916. These experiments were so groundbreaking that he kept records of them in journals he called the Black Books. The Red Book is filled to the brim with his visions, fantasies, chats with himself, paintings, and all his thoughts on his deep dive into the hidden realms of the unconscious and the collective unconscious. He also used it to develop the basic concepts of his later theories. Ever heard of archetypes, the anima and animus, the shadow, the self, individualism, synchronicity, and the transcendent function? They all took shape here. What's super intriguing about the Red Book is that it wasn't published or even available for study until 2009. It stayed under wraps for almost a century, thanks to the cooperation of Jung's family. It took three people, Mark Kybers, John Peck, and Sonusham Dasani, to translate it from German to English. They also wrote an introduction and notes to help readers navigate through Jung's complex mind. When it was finally published, they made sure to include facsimiles of the original manuscript. Imagine flipping through 404 pages filled with calligraphic text and vibrant illustrations. But they didn't stop there. They also added three appendices with even more juicy stuff from Jung's draft manuscripts and seminars. And you wouldn't believe the kind of stuff the Red Book explores. We're talking deep dives into the human imagination and the power of creativity. It forces us to confront our own shadows, the darker, repressed sides of ourselves we'd rather ignore. It's all about striking a balance between reason and irrationality, masculinity and femininity, the conscious and unconscious. The Red Book isn't just a quick read, it's a profound, thought-provoking work that needs time, attention, and interpretation. It's an intimate look into Jung's personal struggles, doubts, hopes, and insights. Number 1. 2,000-year-old Bible chapter. And now, on to the most anticipated topic, the hidden chapter in the Bible that's over 2,000 years old. This chapter was part of the book of Matthew, and for more than 1,500 years, it was sneakily hidden under other texts. How did we uncover it? Enter the science squad armed with ultraviolet photography. They use this technology to peer through multiple layers of text edits on this ancient manuscript called a palimpsest, which is a fancy word for old paper people used to write over again and again. And under all those layers, they found this lost chapter. The chapter wasn't just some repetition of what we already know. It was an old version of chapter 12 in the book of Matthew, originally part of the old Syriac translations of the Bible. The plot thickened when they found that there were differences from our modern translations of this chapter, including a tidbit about disciples rubbing grain in their hands before munching on it on the Sabbath. This lost chapter gives us a unique peek into the Bible's evolution, offering clues about its earliest forms that we couldn't have otherwise. But it's not just historical trivia, it also delves into some spine-chilling stuff like demons, unclean spirits, and blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. It talks about Jesus casting out a demon from a man who couldn't see or talk and warning the Pharisees about the one sin that won't be forgiven, speaking against the Holy Spirit. And let's not forget a bunch of parables and teachings of Jesus that make you think and question. This 2,000-year-old Bible-revealed lost chapter is one of the many books that have been hidden or outright banned throughout history. Makes you wonder why, doesn't it? It's like the Book of Enoch, which talks about fallen angels, or the Book of Soigo with its magical tables and secrets. Each of these books, including our mysterious lost chapter, holds a mirror up to history, culture, and spirituality, facets of our existence that we often overlook or even suppress. They're like a puzzle, each piece revealing a little more about our collective past. What do you think of these books? Let us know in the comments. See you in the next one.